Hi everyone, Alicia Miguel here with Mac Labs. Today we are in grade six, the second unit, Ratio and Proportional Relationships. And this corresponds um, with Common Core Content Standard 6.RP.3A and C. Basically, students are going to use a double number line um, to solve problems involving rates, ratios, and proportions. Okay, and this is Math Lab 2.3. And mathematical practices really Honestly, like one through eight, besides using tools, unless you think about like your pencil as a tool, but um, really all eight mathematical practices, but especially again, number four. Math Labs uses a lot of visual models because that really gets to the concept and, and shows the conceptual understanding of quantities and, and relationships with numbers. And um, let me just tell you, this is my fave. Um, this is my favorite model to show proportional reasoning um, for rates, for percents, for ratios, for um, proportions. Honestly, like it's, it's, it's like love. Like I love double number lines. In fact, the, the title of this lesson is um, Double the Fun using a double number line. It is really that much fun. Okay, you didn't like my title, but I like my title. Okay, I worked really hard thinking about the title. All right, everyone, let's open up to our um, lab 2.3 in our um, lab workbook, and please read the objective in your head as I read it aloud. I can use a double number line to solve problems, solve problems involving, why is it so hard for me to read? Um, involving rates, ratios, and proportions. Okay, so this idea um, about proportions and proportional uh, relationships, etc., is just basically what we already talked about and what we filled out on our sheet of vocabulary words. Um, and so I want you to go back to that if you need to, but I'm gonna be asking you the question in context and as opposed to just you know, telling you what the, the definition is right now. All right, let's um, tap into some prior knowledge. So um, I have a little table here, and remember in our last um, lab that um, we looked at ratio tables, okay? And so I have this table started here to show the relationship between hands and fingers. So two hands, boom, eight fingers. Yeah, that's right, eight. I didn't make a mistake. I know you're thinking 10. No, these are thumbs. What I'm here for just to give you a thumbs up, not fingers up, thumbs up, eight fingers. Okay, right here. So if you are, um, so if you have two hands, you have eight fingers here, and we could find what um, what we did in our last uh, lab is we found equivalent ratios. So I could say, hmm, what if I had four hands, or like there's two people and we have four hands, and we're doing like a little patty cake, whatever it may be. There's four hands. Well. How many fingers is that? And you guys really, really caught on fast that that would be doubled because two doubles to four. And so eight would have to also double to 16. And we also used addition. We talked about how here, you know, if you add two um, hands, then you're adding four fingers. And to really show that, we're gonna go back here to one. So how do we get the unit ratio? Well, if two hands are eight fingers, how do we go back to one? So one hand, and you guessed it, we use division. So two divided by two, like half of two is one, right? So if we divide this by two, we have to also divide eight by two. And so what is half of eight? Very good, four. So indeed, we have one hand is four fingers. And, and we can see that here. If I have all of the fingers on my hand and my one thumb, that one hand is four fingers, two would be eight. And so the, the way that we used addition was for every one hand, we're adding four fingers. But we also looked at the multiplicity. Oh, I love that word, I just like saying the word. How we could use multiplication here, like one times four gives you four. Four times four gives you 16. And that can help us solve other problems that maybe use larger numbers instead of continuing our table using addition. Now we're gonna take that idea and apply it to a double number line. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna draw a horizontal line and another horizontal line. 
So I'm going to drop two. All right, and hence the word double. Okay, we have an one unit. We're looking at hands, and the other we are looking at fingers. Now, I want you to think about where these values would go on our double number line. And these could go on forever because, you know, ratio and proportional reasoning, depending on the scenario, the situation, if it's confined, you know, if we have a limit or whatnot, it goes on forever. So I just indicated that these um, lines here continue with an arrow. But essentially, we have two horizontal lines, one being hands to, in this case, fingers. We're looking at a ratio in this particular problem. So just think about where would you place those values? Time's up. So um, the good thing about this is you can kind of put them wherever you want as long as they are in order and they show some spatial reasoning. Like I can say, I can just start with that green two to eight and go, you know what? Okay, two hands, I'm just gonna make it here. Two hands shows, boom, eight fingers. And then what I can do from here is show other values that are proportional, okay? And also equivalent to this here ratio of two to eight, okay? So we can look at our table and see four to 16. And we might see that that could be, if this is like one, then maybe here this is two, three, four over here. And it's okay if it's not spaced out perfectly, as long as you have the idea here. So this is four, two doubles to four, right? And so I'm just gonna draw a little times two up here. And also eight must then double. And what was eight double? Well, we saw in our table that eight doubled was 16. So that is our ratio quantity here for fingers. So essentially four hands shows us 16 fingers. Now we, we always like to go back here to one. And so it just gives us that unit. And it, it's gonna be very helpful if we know one hand because then we could figure out anything. Like if somebody said, well, what would you know 30 hands be? And, and then we could just take that one and you guessed it multiply by 30 to get that 30 and then do the same thing here. So if we want to go back to one, if you recall, we took half, you know, of two. You could take four divided by four and get one. There are numerous ways that you could get to your unit rate here, in this case ratio. So we have hands, one hand, and we use division. So I'm just going to show you that we divided two by two. So we took it and took half of two and got one. So then we're going to divide eight also by that same two. Because think about what you do to the top here, you must do to the bottom. Because you're maintaining this equality here to show equivalencies and also proportional relationships. Okay, these are proportional. These are these all are naming that same ratio of one to four, two to eight. All right. If we said two to nine and one to four, we'd say no. You know, in this case, especially with four and sixteen as a third number, these that would not be proportional. Um, if we had like two to nine, and then we had one to four and four to sixteen. Okay, so when we divide eight by two, we get four, of course. And our table shows that here: one hand, four fingers. And so this is a double number line. Why do I love it so much? What's not to love? I mean, two horizontal lines with arrows showing a ratio or a specifically, it could be a rate like miles per hour or feet per second or how many dollars you make per hour or whatever it may be. And you can show all of these beautiful relationships and equivalencies. That's awesome, right? I mean, even half, like what if you had one and a half hands? Right, like what would that be proportionally here between this four and eight, the six? I mean, there's so many great things that you can pull from a double number line and extract and go, wow, I really have this idea about this number and this number and the relationship that exists among them. And that is this proportionality here, that these are proportional. And that I can use multiplication and even addition for that matter. Because if I keep adding a hand, I'm adding 
four fingers. So I could show here this relationship of three. Boom. And I could also show adding, adding a hand, adding a hand, adding a hand. Here, adding four fingers, adding four fingers. So there's my 12, adding four fingers. And then you can also use the multiplication. So it's almost like a ratio table, but in a horizontal fashion. And it's going to especially prove to be helpful with our rates when we look at different units, like, for example, miles per hour. The next example you're going to do on your whiteboards. So if you could take out your whiteboards, I'm going to erase all of this beautiful mathematics. And I have a similar problem, and then you're going to break off in with your uh, partner, and you're going to work on the lab together, and then we'll brief at the end. All right, so the problem is Luke traveled 240 miles in four hours. I'm just going to put the information here. He traveled 240 miles, all right, and he did this in four hours. Now, I'm not done with the problem. I have a question for you. If he continues at this rate... How many miles, so we don't know how many miles, how many miles will he go if he travels for eight hours? Now, we can do this problem rather quickly in our heads, but I just want to show you the, the beautiful relationship so that when you get to harder problems, you can then use the same model and then show exactly what your proportion and your equivalent um, ratios and weights look like. All right, so let's start. So we have, remember, two horizontal lines, hence the word double, right? And in this case, it's beautiful because we are looking at a rate, and so we have miles per hour, and we're looking at it, you could do it the other way, hours and miles. It's really not that important in this problem because it doesn't ask, like for a unit rate, it's, it's asking how many miles did Luke go in eight hours here? So I'm just gonna put miles and then hours here, and that's usually standard anyway, but that doesn't mean that you can't ever say how long did it take him to go one mile, and, and it'd be the other way. Hours here, the time here, and the miles here, okay? All right, but in this case, we have 240 miles in four hours. Now, I can kind of space that out wherever I want, all right? And so I'm just gonna kind of like put it right in the middle. 240 miles, right? in four hours. And then from there, I'm going to think about maybe some other equivalent rates that I could write using my double number line. For example, right now I want you to pause the video and I want you to write um, basically two, what happens in two hours, what happens in one hour, and then to solve the problem, what happens in eight. And so I want you to find out how many miles are at each of these amounts so that you kind of understand exactly um, how to set up the rates and, and to find the equivalent um, unit. Now, remember the strategy that we used. Show your work. Okay, so I want to see arches and see if you're multiplying and dividing, etc. All right, so go ahead and pause and do that now, either on your whiteboard or on your scrap piece of paper. All right, we're back. So, um, hopefully what you were able to, to think about was 240 miles in four hours. The easiest way to get to one is to just, if it's especially even, you could keep taking the number and maybe dividing by two. And it just depends what the numbers are. Some people are like, no, I want to divide by four. Four divided by four, I'm going to do it in one step. That's fine. But when I, when I think about prices, I usually keep dividing something in half and in half and in half until I get like maybe what the cost is for one. And so I want you to get used to, to utilizing that skill of having a number and having a number until you get down to one. Okay, so half of four is two. So this is dividing by two, right? To get this missing mile for two hours. So half of four is two, half of 240 is, drum roll, you guessed it, you got it right, 120. And then if we wanted to get to one, we could take half of two. So we could divide by two again. So if we divide by two again, two divided by two is one hour, and then we have to divide our miles by two. So if we divided that by two, half of 120 is, you guessed it, 60. You didn't guess it, you know it, because you're smart -ables. Now, that didn't answer the question, because if you read the question, it says how many miles did Luke travel in eight hours? So this is the 
question mark, okay? And we're going to replace the question mark with an X because this is our unknown and we could replace it with any variable. I might even choose M for our unknown mile and, and that kind of here will help us to make sense of this in the context, this variable M for mile. So how many miles did Luke travel in eight hours here? So this is an easy problem. We didn't even have to do all of that, but I just want to show you the relationship and I wanted you to practice on your whiteboards of making these other values. But you could have obviously just went four times two, right, is eight. So you double four and you double 240. Now, if you double 240, you get 480. The idea here is, and I'm just going to write that in the same color, 480, um, that you see this relationship between the numbers when they are here on this double number line. And it's going to help you to solve problems involving proportions. But also, we're going to use this kind of a similar idea for percents. And that's really, really going to help us to understand um, a part of the whole in terms of the percent. I'm going to write my numbers um, or, or my sentence here, which is Luke. So my statement. Travel 480 miles 